Hey guys. So this is um, my first testimony video and I'm so excited to be able to um, do this video this morning. You're gonna hear a lot of noise in the background because they're like um, mowing the grass and things out here by this church I live by. And But anyway, so welcome to Pursue to Pursue testimony uh, videos. It's gonna be every Thursday. I'm hoping to have them posted by 7 p.m. every night. Um, and so, but I am actually doing this in the morning. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, I just wanna pray and just give God glory and just thank him so much because he put this on my heart um, a little over a year ago and I just wasn't ready. He put it on my heart that it was going to come to pass that I would begin to do these testimonies. There's so much to talk about of what the Lord has done in my life. And there's so much to talk about, you know, of what he's done in my friends' lives and people that I've encountered in my walk with God. Um, he's done so much and we want to give a testament and an account to what he's done in our lives, who he is, who we know he is, why we preach like this, why we proclaim his name, why we get excited like this, why signs and wonders follow us, why we're not the same that we were yesterday, we're different today, why it looks, why our faces and even our continents looks different. There's a reason why, why we look so much more lifted and, and light and, ha and happier and joyful. There's a reason to it, why it's consistent. Why is it consistent? There's a reason for it and his name is Jesus. So that's what we're gonna talk about um, in these testimonies is what he's done. But we're gonna talk about the things that we've been through, the dark stuff, the stuff nobody wants to really talk about, the stuff people think that they're all alone in by themselves. So we're gonna get there eventually, but today I'm going to just begin with telling you about my um how I found Jesus and I'm going to sip my coffee as I do that so I hope that is like appropriate <laughs> but I mean hey I'm relaxed I'm on my porch and I'm you know I'm chill so um anyhow here we go so dear Lord we just thank you I thank you so much for this day I thank you for um blessing this this day it's beautiful um, and I just thank you for uh, pushing me to this place to finally give these testimonies and to make these videos to bless others, to enlighten others. And I just pray that you would um, speak through me t through this video, that it would bless someone. We know, Father, that you are the only one that can draw me into Christ. I can't do that. But my testimony, give an account to who you are, can you can draw people through this and i'm grateful for that father i pray you bless this man over here on this um driving mower and that you would just um just bless this area that i'm in and um just help me to get this out and to also have a good day at work today to be able to shine light um shine your light and then i ask that you bless anyone who's listening to this word or this testimony that you touch them that you open their heart and that you give them courage and that you give them boldness um, and that you open their eyes and that you uplift their soul father god and we just love you we give you all the praise power glory and honor in jesus name i pray amen we pray amen okay so um when i was younger when i was two and a half years old um we'll just start with like some of the tough stuff sad stuff my mother was killed, she was murdered um, here in, in, she was found in uh, Licking County, but um, you know, she's from Columbus, she was from Columbus, Ohio, and she was murdered. And um, when I was two and a half years old, so I lost my mother, I ended up being raised by my grandmother. I had two siblings. Um, I never met my brother, um, but I've met my sister, and she's a beautiful young woman, and I'm very proud of her. Her name is Talia and I'm hope she, I hope she's listening to this, but we were separated. She was adopted at, um, at the hospital and I, I was already with my grandparents. Um, I was two and a half years old. My mother had just had my sister kind of right after me and then my brother uh, a couple months before she was murdered. So life was not easy. It was tough growing up. I didn't grow up with my siblings. Um, I want to one day find my brother, but that's just a whole nother thing. Um, and so um, I didn't actually meet my sister till I was 16 or 17 years old. And um, so again, I grew up without siblings. I grew up with my grandmother um, and she worked a lot. Um, so um, life, my grandfather wasn't the nicest guy. Um, we didn't get along very well. Um, as I grew up, you know, I went to um, a Christian 
preschool and kindergarten and then I went to regular public school beginning in elementary and that's where the stuff started I just you know I didn't fit in anywhere and especially in the 90s um, biracial children were not accepted by blacks and they were not accepted by whites and I'm not saying all I'm just saying it was there was a there was tension there with on the with blacks and with whites so I'm just putting that out there that biracial kids um, they suffer too they struggle um, you don't ever hear us talk about it but we, we've struggled too and so um, you know I had a lot of struggles with black girls with you know white people really didn't talk to me white girls kids didn't really talk to me that much I had some white friends but like at school um, I don't know really what it could have just been a kid thing but um, I did get like picked on a lot especially because my hair was curly um, girls were really mean to me they would ask me things like who what side are you on you're are you white are you black and, you know and and it's confusing for kids it's in the 90s it was just not like it is today so I, that's just the truth it wasn't so life was just kind of hard I grew up with a white family I didn't know my other side because I never met my father um, my mother passed away I don't think she ever told anyone who he was maybe she didn't know I don't know but I never met my father nobody knows who he is there's no name I probably will never know him and I'm thankful that I have my Heavenly Father because he has truly taught me who a father is you know what a father is and so all the things that I once grew up with thinking about a father that has I have unlearned those things and now I know my father will never leave me or forsake me he's always here he'll never abandon me I grew up with a lot of abandonment um, rejection issues because when you're a child and you go through those things that's the enemy immediately sets those things into a child's mind um, and I think I would say most people deal with rejection and abandonment especially if they come from broken homes my grandmother was an amazing woman. I, she's still an amazing woman. She's still with us. She lives with um, my son and I. My son and I. We all live together, um, and I'm so grateful because I've been praying since I was 10 years old that she could come, that we could all be together and live in a nice house and those things like that. And the Lord has just blessed us tremendously. Um, but my grandmother took the best care that she could of me. She did the best job that she could. But there were other things that I was going through that she didn't understand or that she didn't know because she grew up in an era where a lot of the things that we get it that I got into my generation got into and these new generation what they're into she didn't know any of that stuff so you know it was kind of hard in, in terms of parenting in that regard I'm sure for her but she loved me and that was the one thing that I needed was love and she did that and she did that wonderfully and I'm so grateful for her so Yes, life was tough. You know, it was, it, I got into a lot of silly things um, growing up. I got into experimenting with drugs. I started having sex when I was 13 years old. I started using drugs when I was 13 years old. I hung out with the wrong people starting around that age, a little younger than that actually, about 12. I started going out, sneaking out at about 12, and then I started doing other promiscuous things at 13, and it never stopped. It just never stopped. This thing continued to evolve from 12 13 all the way up till I was about uh, 18 years old well 17 years old I got pregnant by the wrong person I'm so thankful for my son so God bless that but this man was very mean he was very um, cruel he was he was um, he was a drug dealer he I found I met him in a, in a trap house he was verbally abusive um, and it got physical a couple times, but he was just, he was just very, very broken himself. And he broke my heart. My heart had never been broken until I met my son's father, um, my son's, uh, biological father. So, um, you know, I went through that heartbreak for a long time. Um, a single mother that young, I was 17 when I got pregnant, I was still in high school. Um, that is a whole nother pain and honestly it can chemically change you the stress that I was under messed me up and I it's only by the grace of God that I have my mind today it's only by the grace of God that I am who I am today um, and so you know I'm grateful so grateful I would never ever go back 
and asked for my life to be different, even though the journey was extremely tough. I was on um, welfare for 10 years. I got off welfare. I was in low income housing for two years after I had my son, got out of that. You know, I believed in working and taking care of what I had to take care of and getting out of the system. I didn't want to be a statistic, but I was for a time. Um, and, um, and so, you know, the Lord blessed me even in that. I can't take claim for anything. He's done everything. Um, so yeah, I met my son's dad and, um, you know, I settled down a little bit because I had a son. He and I never worked out. We never dated, got back together, anything like that. I raised my son on my own with no help to him from him. Um, you know, and that's, that's fine. I am so grateful for my child. And at the end of the day, I am so grateful because it couldn't have been anyone else to give me that child but him. So I pray the Lord blesses him. I don't want anything, you know, any, I wish nothing bad for him. I want the best for him and his family. So um, anyhow, um, you know, it was me and my son, you know, I, I was a young girl raising a, a little baby and it was hard. And, um, after my son's dad, I got into a really, really bad domestic violence, like a seriously bad relationship with a guy who was also very broken, but see, I was broken too. So I was looking for love in all the wrong places and I found broken people. It's like a light, uh, you know how a light attracts like lots of flies or whatever I was a fly too I went no better for real like I was out here doing my thing but I mean just saying I would attract the wrong guys and so I mean I was I was in the gutters too I wasn't doing right you know I'm not gonna put all that on guys I wasn't doing right either because I was giving myself away you know but um, you know I was troubled just like they were you know whatever happened in our lives we just you know had a misunderstanding of of ourselves of who we were what we were made for our worth and things like that and we gave our treasures and the our goods to the enemy like the enemy it has a play in all of this stuff promiscuity fornication drug use all of that that's all the devil so anyhow you know i met this guy and i you know cared about him um but you know he was just very violent very very violent nature and i was with him for three years and um i almost got killed in that relationship like he shot at me we used to fight he used to put his hands on me and the fighting used to the beatings were bad like we would it was really bad and I didn't know how to get away from him because he would threaten my family and stuff like that he would do awful things that I won't even discuss on this video and um, I remember laying on the ground one day um, by the way this video may cut out I don't think I'm gonna get it done in 15 minutes so I'm gonna have another video that I'll it'll just kind of transition um, so let me back up just a little bit I'm kind of getting wandered here I'm sorry wandering a little bit um, with my message, but I wanted to go back to talk about, um, I went to preschool and kindergarten in a Christian school. I went to vacation Bible school and that's how I heard about Jesus. So my grandmother tried to keep me in programs and stuff like that. Um, we would go to church sometimes. I didn't know what was going on. I just knew there was a man named Jesus and I used to love singing the songs. So, um, but anyhow, trouble came. I became a teenager, went through my stage, and I got into some deep stuff. So moving on to the abusive relationship after my son's dad, um, it was just really bad and I didn't know how to get out of it. Well, I remember laying on the floor one night and it was just such a bad night. I mean, we had gotten into a really bad fight and I was really like, I'm not going to make it if I don't get out of this relationship. And I laid on the floor and I curled up in a ball and I said, Lord, if, if you're real, if you're really there, Jesus, I need you to rescue me. I need help. I need help Jesus I can't get out of this and if you're really there would you take me out of this would you would you bring me out of this I just remember laying there in fetal position crying on my bathroom floor well after that um, that's when the sh that's when I was done I, I didn't want to be in that relationship anymore and the enemy knew I was trying to get out I was breaking out and um, that's when he shot at me and the bullet didn't even into like we we couldn't find the bullet it was in my car we were i was driving and he shot at my car the glass caved in not one piece of glass hit me in my head i didn't have one cut the officers couldn't even find the the shell casing there was no evidence of it except for a shattered window um and it was a loud blast and it was very close where he shot at my car he was right behind my trunk and he shot into my car um and my son wasn't in the car it was all god 
And after that, the Lord gave me the strength and he moved me to a suburb on low income and blessed me. <laughs> That's a whole nother story, okay? But I got out of that situation um, and never went back. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and transition this video. After that um, situation with the abusive relationship, um, I moved into a suburb and I stayed there and I was still troubled, but I knew God got me out of that situation. And I knew that there was more I needed to do as a response to what he had done for me. I, um, at 18 years old, um, this was between 18 and 19 years old when all this occurred, uh, 18 to, I'm sorry, 18 to 20, one-ish okay so i kind of jumped ahead again um when i was 18 backing up a bit i was i gave my life to christ like i remember standing up and really feeling i'm ready to give my life to christ nothing really ha well i didn't think anything was really happening at that time but i felt different um and now that i know that's when my convictions begin to set in even when I was in that bad relationship, I knew it was wrong. Having sex with him, I knew it was wrong. I didn't want to have sex with him. I didn't want to do that because I knew what the Bible said and I had this conviction. So that's when I really felt that I truly did give my life to Jesus when I was 18 years old. Um, and, um, Oh my gosh, I'm like all over the place. Oh yeah, 18 years old, sorry. I, I was still, I got pregnant at 17 and I had my son at 18. I was just about to have my son. It was like in March or April when I finally, uh, 2007, when I finally raised my hand in this church and I really, really wanted to take Jesus in. A few months later, I had my son in July. Um, so anyhow, um, so I was 18. And then um, I think I was already with, no, no, I had met that guy like right around that time. And um, so yeah, at about 19 to 20, that's when I laid on the floor in fetal position and um, prayed and asked God to come in and to rescue me from that place. So I was convicted when I first, you know, gave Jesus my life at 18. I would start feeling convicted of the bad things that I was doing. And then 1920, when I had prayed like that on my floor, um, when I prayed like that on my floor, um, that's when that's when things really started to shake. So after that, I knew there had to be a response. Like I needed to do, I needed to do more. And um, my grandmother started asking me to come to church with her and stuff like that. Like Sarah, come to church with me. And at first, I was like, oh. So I would go with her because I didn't want her to go alone. But then I started listening to the word, and I was just like this is powerful like these people are blessed they're happy excuse me they have this happiness and all that and I'm just like broken and you know I knew I was hurting and I just was so in this I was so ashamed and felt so much guilt but it didn't matter because what I was listening to was so incredible to me like I was just like Jesus is a friend Jesus is a nice guy he cares about us you know he loves us Jesus is powerful like these are the things I started to feel and I remember there was a lady that came into the church. Um, I had been reading, seek me and you will find me, knock and the door will be open. And I said, okay, Jesus, I'm gonna do that then. And I, and I wanna see something, you know, if, if this is real, I'm really, 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 really gonna seek you for real, okay? Cause I know that I want this. And I began to seek him. I, I went to church every Sunday, any Bible study they had, I was going. And I'd sit right in the front and I would listen to everything the pastor was saying. And I would be searching the scriptures and I found my Lord, I found him. And I, I wanted to go to church every Sunday. I wanted to be with the Lord. And so it was a very, it was a new, it was a new beginning for me. I didn't know what to, that what was going to come of it, but I knew that I had found him. It said in the word, seek me and you will find me. Knock and the door will be open. I was knocking as I was reading his word, as I was studying and inquiring and wanting more of him. And so, um, and there was a woman that came, a guest speaker. She was a prophetess. And the Lord did said, I did not come to destroy the law or do away with the prophets. There are still prophets today. Um, and they speak uh, for the Lord. And this woman came to our church. And the reason I know that she was truly a true prophet of the Lord, prophetess of the Lord, prophet of the Lord, is because after what she said to me, what she said to me, 
what she said that the Lord was speaking actually took place. That's how I know that she, this was true. And then the encounter that I had with the Lord that I'll never forget. So she came, she was speaking to many people. She was blessing many people, praying over them and calling things, um, calling things out in their life that the Lord was speaking about that was going to come to pass or that needed to change or whatever, mostly what was going to come to pass. And then the last person she decided to come to, well, not she decided, but the Lord sent her to was me. So I'm sitting there like, oh my gosh, she's coming over here. <laughs> she's coming over here. I just knew it. I was like, she's going to say something to me. And I'm never the one that gets chosen. Like, okay, like, you know how you put your name in like a little dish bowl to win a prize? I never get that. I never win on anything on the radio stations. Like, it's never me. But this day it was me. So I'm sitting there and I knew it. And I'm like, I know she's coming over here. I know she's coming over here. So she's like... She's walking around. She, it's like she's sniffing. Like, who is it that the Lord wants me to speak to? There's someone right here in this middle section. And I'm like, she don't see me. Maybe she won't see me if I don't move. <laughs> so I was just, I was shy. I was embarrassed. I was like, no, I don't want to get up in front of all these people. And so um, she looked at me and she said, you young lady, come up here. I was like, gosh and all of a sudden I heard deny me before man and I will deny you before my father in heaven I got up quick this is what I heard what what was recalled to me I got up so quick right after I heard that I heard humble yourself and then I knew the true definition of humbling myself I got up I walked over to her and I listened to what the woman had to say and she began to tell me things about my life that nobody ever knew. It was like Jesus at the well with the Samaritan woman when he told her, yes, you're right. You have five husbands. You're telling me that you um, aren't married, but in fact, you have five husbands. Jesus didn't call her a liar. Jesus didn't like come out to confront her to hurt her or anything like that. He was just telling her like you're in a situation and, and and you need to be released from the shame and the guilt and you need to be forgiven and you need the true water not this well water but you need the true water the water of life which is me jesus christ one that will never run dry and she began to tell me things that woman went back into her city the samaritan woman went back into her city and she said come and listen and learn from a man that told me everything about myself this woman was telling me things about myself that nobody really knew you know my but she didn't do it in an embarrassing way it was just more like sweetie there's things going on in your life that you know about that need to end there's men in your life that need to go. She was telling me these things and it was so, so true. It was so true. She was telling me, um, you know, she spoke to my heart about my rejection, about the pain that I was, that I had been going through as a young mother. She, she didn't know I had a child or any of that. And she, I remember she said, and you will, you will have what you, what you've always desired, which is a, a family, a functional family with structure, mom and dad, children. And that's all I've ever wanted. And even from my child, that's all I've ever wanted. And the Lord, I know, will bless me with that because he said it. So all these things she was talking about, I just remember being uplifted like God has to be speaking to her because no one knows these things I feel inside and no one knows my desires like this. And so this woman prayed over me and then she touched me and just blessed me. And I remember going slowly down to the ground. I couldn't stand because the power of God was upon me so heavily. The Holy Spirit came upon me so heavily that I couldn't stand up. And I just had to lay, lay down on the ground. <laughs> and I remember trying to get up and I just couldn't. And it was just the most inviting, welcoming, warm feeling, heavy from head to toe that I've ever felt in my life. And it was amazing. And I knew then I knew and nothing could ever tell me different that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And that was the one I went to seek and that is who I found. And he blessed me in that moment in a way that I'll never, ever, ever forget him. I've been through so much stuff after this. And the one thing I hold on to is that he is, he is alive, he is real, he has risen, and he has touched me. And I have heard him. And he has touched me and I have responded to his call and he is there. He is as close as the mention of his name. He's rescued me out of my darkness and brought me into his magnificent light. He took me out of my oceans of anguish and deep despair. After that day, I was never the same. 
I remember trying to go back into the clubs. My, I didn't mention that, but you know, yeah, I was at the clubs every every weekend. That Saturday, which is you know the the Sabbath, you know that the God says this is holy day. That was the day that I was partying, living it up, having sex every Saturday. Okay, that was the night to do my dirt. I tried to go back to the club after that, and I was so convicted even getting ready. I tried to go back to the club. I literally saw hooded demons everywhere. Even in the TV screens, I saw hooded demons and I never laid my foot back into a nightclub again. The Lord called me out of those nightclubs. He called me out of those, those beds I was sleeping with men in and all of this stuff. So I, I stopped. I stopped living the way that I was living. But I didn't know how to deal with my emotions and my feelings and my lust, right? I wasn't being discipled. I was going to church, but I wasn't being discipled. And so... I kind of went, I, I did end up in a, in a fornicating, you know, fornicating again and things like that. I ended up getting pregnant, got my heart broken, um, but I was always convicted strongly. My, my flesh and my spirit, the spirit of God was, because I was saved, I was reborn again, was always wrestling, okay, until finally I surrendered. I was just like, I'm done. No, I cannot. I'm done. I'm not sleeping with these men. I'm not doing this type of stuff. I'm not I'm not living like this anymore. I don't want this. God called me away from all of that fornication, all of that stuff. And 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 he'll call you away from it as well. Um and so he had to clean me up. He had to clean my temple up. There was so much destruction in my temple. He had to clean it all up and give me a new mind and all of that, renew my mind. And um, and so I was also baptized shortly after that lady had spoken over my life. I, I, short, I was baptized short, shortly after. Um, there was a situation I was plotting to do something that I, I, had, I, should, I shouldn't have been thinking about doing or any of that. Um, once I went down in that water and I came back up, that thought went away. And again, my life has never been the same. After I encountered that woman and she prayed over me and I felt the presence of God after my baptism, my life was never the same again. In fact, after that encounter with that woman, I went outside to go home and there, were a, there was a double rainbow in the sky for me, I believe, um, of a promise, of a promise. Um, and he's never left. He's always been there ever since and he's blessed me with friends um, that helped uplift me, that helped me in my, my, my time of need and he's placed me in a, in a, a home, a body, a church, a body. We are the church and he's placed me in that body. I'm not saying that I haven't had struggles after that because I most certainly have. A lot of things had to be broken off of me, my mind, all these different things. I had to learn new ways of living, patterns of behavior and things like that had to be um, stripped. I had to be stripped of certain things. So I've had my share of issues even after, but my life has never been the same. And today I live holy to the Lord. I do not I have not, um, I do not fornicate. I have not in four years. Um, my life has changed drastically. Um, signs follow. I'm in ministry. Another thing that this lady had said, this prophetess had spoke over me was that I would go into working with young women and children based on the things I had been through. I would be able to serve them. Right after that, I began to work with women and children and doors opened up for me. I began to, I don't even have a degree yet, and I began to get employment in social services and built my way up. And now I make money as if I have a bachelor's degree in social services. God has blessed me. What that woman spoke was true and God spoke through her and blessed me and my life has never been the same since God encountered me. From the laying on that floor, you know, from, the, from being in that church at 18, giving my life to Christ, laying on that floor in fetal position, asking him to rescue me, going to that church, seeking him diligently so that I would find him. Um, that lady speaking over my life to now, my life has never been the same. And I am so, so blessed. I'm going to get into more details of the, of, the, of the little things that you need to know that I want to share with you that transpired through all of this time from when I was a very young girl on up to now, other details and things I'm gonna share, but I wanted to kind of give you a, a overview of everything. But yes, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want he'll make me lie down in green pastures and lead me beside still waters. The Lord has been so good to me to give me peace and comfort. Um, and he has just rescued me, he's restored me, he's healed me from rejection and abandonment and I know who my father is and I serve him and I'm more joyful and happier than I've ever been. 
ever in my life. And I'm so grateful to have shared this with you. And I pray that this blessed you. And I'm sorry I kind of went in and out, but that's just how it is with testimonies because you just never really know what's going to come out. Like the Lord just sends it out. So I pray that you were able to follow along. And I pray that this blesses you and that you would share with me, um, you know, one day, you know, where the Lord has, is bringing you or has brought you or where you're at, where you find yourself. I want to hear from you. So God bless you. I love you. And I'm so excited for you. 